I am from the HCI group. Um, I used to work in the NHS um, for the past 11 um, years um, at Cambridge University Hospitals um, and was in operational management and EPR implementation and have now moved across um, into um, healthcare IT consulting. So um, we will be doing a presentation on digital workspace. Um, Tet Mahindra acquired um, the HCI group um, last year. Um, and from a HCI group point of view, we provide healthcare IT consulting as well as EPR implementation um, and managed services. Thank you, Anna. Uh, my name is Prasad Das. Uh, I'm from Tech Mahindra. I'm an, a digital workspace architect. Uh, so who Tech Mahindra is? Uh, we are a system integrator who deals into customers across the globe and to multiple verticals. We have a very strong relationship with British Telecom, uh, if I talk about the local presence in UK for last 30 years, and some of the clients which you can look at the screen, like say Sony, Barclays, Free, etc. Uh, so we have been uh, into IT administration and IT infrastructure management services for a long time, I have been providing those services to multiple customers. Just wanted to give you a brief about uh, what our presence is in UK. Just looking from a, a GD point of view and um, transformation. So obviously, um, having worked at a GDE, we know that accessibility and mobility in terms of the services that we provide about how, what, and where our clinicians are able to access the applications and data is vitally important, regardless of where they are and what device they are using. Again, any service that comes in or digital transformation needs to be secure um, and compliant with all the regulations in place. Having a system in place that benefits not just the patient but the end user um, is vitally important, especially where you've got, for say, a nurse who's working over multiple sites. They want to have the same consistent workflow of being able to access those applications and that data regardless of where they're working. And as such, therefore, it would bring patient care more efficient because of that workflow and the end users being able to access. In terms of cost efficiency, you require the solutions to have a financial benefit and this can be achieved by consolidation and automation, which Prasad is going to talk about. And obviously from a GDE point of view, you need a solution that's transferable to the fast followers, to the STPs and to other um, trusts, acute and community and primary care and you need a solution that is scalable as well right so since i got the mic and got the stage i have an opportunity to ask you a question how many of us really use my, our mobile phones to access work emails pretty much everyone so this is about you, this session is about you, this uh, session is about how your workspace is evolving and uh, what we are providing. Uh, if I look at the challenges in terms of delivering a workspace in, in any organization at this moment, uh, the first aspects come into play mind is what are the security concerns and what are the security challenges which I'm addressing? How do I address them? How do I make myself com compliant to the various compliance uh, audit policies and uh, the compliance requirements. How do I bring in agility in my IT infrastructure to make sure my organization's employee are flexible, they are more productive, they are more empowered to do their job using my IT systems. At the same time, uh, this employees always look for on-demand provisioning of the applications, on-demand access to their workspaces, and at the same time, patients are bringing their data, like say my blood pressure tracker or maybe uh, my heartbeat tracker, I come and can provide those information uh, in my hospital. So typically, uh, what is digital workspace uh, is the next generation of workspace, which we have evolved. We had been invited by one of our customers long back in 2008 to understand what are their end user needs how they can improve upon the productivity, how they can reduce the cost. And that's when we actually uh, went ahead, understood their requirements, and provided the solution, which is 
virtual desktop infrastructure at the first phase. And that was long back in 2008. And we understood that uh, it's not one size fits all to all the end user needs because every end user has its own needs and personal requirements in order to do his job. For example, a nurse may want to work on EMR application or EPR applications. Uh, an executive might want to have access to the office productivity suite as well as messaging and collaboration as well as he should be able to work from multiple devices irrespective of the time. So what we do is we actually deliver persona-based workspaces with context-aware security and all that is being done by using an OPEX model or CAPEX model, depending on the customer's investments which they have made. So typically, let's say someone who has uh, invested into endpoints already, we, we try to leverage those endpoints. Somebody who has platform available with them, for example, server, compute, storage, network, etc., on premise, we leverage that. We bring in our software licenses and services, or it depends on what kind of operating model we would like to work with. So we are pretty much flexible going into as a service single line, line, I'm sorry, single line item, or it can be a capex model based on the uh, line items which has been shown in the left hand side. So the right right hand side just talks about what are the different needs of the workspaces. Some of the users may need applications only. Some of the users may need complete workstation wherein they need to have resources like say graphics processing unit because they would like to view the images which are generated through uh, packs or the scans which has been performed. So typically this workspace as a service model empowers the users to access their all application as well as the context of their own persona as well as the workspace components from a single device or maybe multiple device irrespective of any device at any given point in time using any network they can access their pretty much secure messaging application any dictation digital dicta dictation software which they are using or maybe uh, there is a video conferencing requirement they can they would like to go ahead with they can do that pretty much using any device along with the listed components out here so typically, how do we thought about this workspace as a service model is we, we looked at the ever-changing demands of this market. We looked at uh, the various scenarios, like say there are teams where or there are customers who would like to uh, transform their call centers, or there are remote and teleworkers who do, do not have a dedicated infrastructure for them. They are using a kiosk kind of model wherein the, everybody logs into the same workstation and works in. Or maybe there are contractors and uh, offshore users wherein they are coming over the network and accessing that. Uh, another typical use case which we have seen is mergers and acquisitions which are happening in the market. And because of that, the application complexity increases, the infrastructure uh, requirement increases or changes completely, or the integration part plays a critical role. Also, we have seen this when the consolidation of the application or business or organization consolidation is happening at that point in time, we can come into play and help to evolve that workspace pretty quickly. Another scenario which I can see across the organization, across the globe, it's pretty much common about migrating their operating system from Windows 7 to Windows 10. And that's where we can come into play and uh, give you that seamless migration because what we do is everything in workspace as a service model is in virtualized environment which brings in uh, simplicity as well as flexibility to upgrade and update the hardware. Talking about the digital transformation which is happening, everybody is pulling towards cloud, uh, talking about Office 365, cloud-based model, hybrid model, or just browser-based application delivery. So all these scenarios can be met to by just using the workspace as a service platform. Now, what do we do in this platform is we remove that overhead from the customer side and we take it on ourselves and we provide this complex VDI designing or VDI services by ourselves. We have the built-in disaster recovery uh, capabilities. We have 
the application and the data security overheads taken care of because of the context awareness we bring in. I'll talk about the context awareness in uh, next few next slide. We also do take care of uh, Windows updates, patches, device upgrades, operating system application, and the overheads coming because of the reactive support. Uh, all this has been taken care of by, as a service provider by us, and we, we deliver a seamless end user experience to our customers. So these are the, some of the values which we look at the bottom, which, which talks about the numbers which we have achieved by using workspace as a service model at our customer places. So typically 40% of call reduction to the service desk because of the pre proactive approach we take. 50% uh, increase in produ productivity because we empower the end users to select what they want, how they would like to have it. For example, provisioning of application, deprovisioning of application, provisioning of a workspace, provisioning of printers, maybe uh, self-service for password reset. So some of these have actually shown us the results of providing the 50% increase into their productivity. Talking about security and flexibility, it's, it's kind of a 100% why we are saying this, because we have seen this results in our customer places, and that's what uh, we are mentioning, that 100% secure and 100% flexible environment. Talking about the feature functionalities and uh, the value adds or solution highlights in this workspace is, first of all, the self-service portal and the automation we have brought in. So we bring in the automation in terms of onboarding a user. And when I say onboarding a user, let's say there is a person who joins the organization and on very first day at, at that moment, I can simply uh, type in the username, password for this particular user and onboard him right away. And he's productive the moment he gets the email, first email, that's it. We also do better license management in terms of applications because what we do is the applications are delivered. There are certain applications which are cost sensitive and not all the users are using that same application all the time. So let us say there are 100 users using a cost sensitive application and uh, now there are 10 more users who would like to use this application. In a traditional scenario, what will happen is I'll have to go ahead, procure those 10 licenses for those users and become compliant for this application policies. In virtual workspace as a service scenario, what we do is we actually pull out a report how many users are actually using this application real time. So by that, what I'll have is I'll have the data pointers. That out of 100 users, only 85 users are using this application at any given point in time. So I have flexibility to allocate 10 licenses to the new users which requested for this application by taking off this 15% applications from the end users. So better license control. Uh, in terms of uh, run book automation, we have certain templates and uh, policies which we have created by our experience and we keep it ready for our customer deployments, making them deliver the workspaces uh, as quickly as possible. Talking about the next generation application delivery, it's, it's not uh, typically the applications are installed either on the server side or either on the client's machine or it's like say laptop, your mobile or it's tablet. However, in workspace as a service, what we do is we centralize all this application delivery into the data center side and we provide the interface at the endpoint device to the end users. So typically what happens is any user who requests for a new application, it is actually created at the back end and he just simply goes on to self-service portal request for that application and that application gets delivered instantly the moment he logs off and log back in. That also helps me as an administrator or IT in, uh, admin guy, I can update, patch my applications at the background without scheduling any downtime for the application upgrades. So that's typically the next generation application delivery or layering which we uh, talk about. In terms of uh, packaging or streaming the application, there is no overhead because we are not packaging any application. We are not uh, re-packaging uh, or streaming any application. So we are layering the application which helps us to ma uh, have lesser number of images to manage in virtual desktop infrastructure as well as I have the flexibility to patch and upgrade those uh, applications without any downtime. Talking about the proactive analytics, it's it, it more of a going proactive way rather than reactive way. Let's say a nurse reports the, that 
her system is into hang state and she's not able to enter the uh, EPR records. So in typical scenario, she has to go ahead, log a service request to the IT, and then IT will work on that. And meanwhile, she has to use another ways or she'll have to work manually. And this is what I have seen in live scenarios. With our proactive approach towards the delivering the workspaces, what we do is, the moment we see there is a machine into hang state, obviously there will be an alert, either it is because of the CPU, memory, or disk, or networking components. We get a smart alert, instead of the user logging a service request, this administrator goes back to user, calls them, and tells them, is your machine into a hang state? Are you not able to work? The moment the nurse confirms that, the person can actually go ahead Real time, he can drill down the root cause, fix that problem, and make sure that workspace is available. So being proactive instead of being reactive, that's the kind of flexibility we bring in. We do have the SLA monitoring capabilities, the KPIs, and the reports, multiple reports we can generate regarding the infrastructure because we have the complete end-to-end -end visibility into the infrastructure which we are delivering to the end users. Talking about the enhanced security, so there are layers of security which we bring in in our solution. First, since everything is hosted into your data center or any data center, like say it could be public cloud, Amazon, Azure, it could be in a partner data center or it could be in your data center, obviously the data center compliance policies will first apply. Second, since we are bringing the applications and the server side all into centralized locations, it, it becomes easily easy to manage those access permissions, etc. So when I say access permissions, let's say I give my example, let's say Prasad is an organization and he's using organization's device to access the organization resources. At that given point in time, he should have access to all the applications and the workspaces entitled to him. However, the moment he steps out of the organization's network and he goes to home and try to access his workspace, I will not give him access to every application because it may have some sensitive information available inside the application. So I can block that access. However, I can make him productive by giving him email access or I can give him certain access levels within the workspace. I'm not giving him full permissions. I'm giving him context-aware permissions based on his persona. So that is a kind of complete protection we can offer. Uh, you might have heard about WannaCry attack, which has happened in recent past. So attacks like these happen because the users have executable rights. And what we do is we typically assign the dynamic privileges within our workspace so that it's assigned or it is allowed to have executables or not allowed to have to launch those executables. So typically, we deal into that kind of security wherein we say read-only blanketing has been provided to the end users. Now, how do we do this? How do we achieve these workspaces? Why we are so successful in terms of uh, keeping our customers happy, delivering those workspaces to end users as and when required on demand? So because of the strategy we adopted around the user assessment or the kind of assessment we do pre-deployment of any organization. So there are two types or two aspects when I talk about the assessment. It's one, the system assessment. Second, the user assessment. So when I talk about the system assessment, what I typically do is I actually gather the performance metrics from the endpoint devices of the users to understand what are their compute, memory, network, disk, etc. requirements. Also, I understand their log on log off times. I understand what are the capabilities currently being accessed by this particular user and how the data center is currently being in use. Versus in the user assessment, what I do is I talk about talk to different stakeholders. It could be from data center side, network side, it could be from application side or the end users themselves to understand their needs and then based on these two assessments, we come up with a single report or outcome, which is like say defined user personas, the user workspace models and make. Uh, we also look for the better strategy in terms of application delivery, how we can deliver those applications considering the local application as well as uh, any legacy applications which, we, which they have. We also look for any 
integration required, like say for example, Improvera is one of the single sign-on features, somebody already has invested into that, definitely we can integrate to that particular uh, application or definitely uh, integrate with that solution as well. And then we also come up with a timeline that how this journey will begin and how where it will be going into a steady state and over phase. Just to provide you an overview of the different personas in healthcare segment, we, we, this is our, these are simple illustrative personas of uh, the medical uh, or healthcare segment uh, domain, which we can say if there are executives and the related to, to executive, what all applications or configurations which are required, what are his mobility requirements, etc. cetera. Uh, this is for same nurses, allied health professional, medical staff, or the IT support staff, which is in there. Uh, healthcare domain side. Some of the savings which we have achieved at our customer places can be defined in this way. So 15 to 20 percent in terms of hardware expenses or hardware expenses they are doing for the managing the workspaces in their traditional environment or virtual environment. Why do we do that? Because we delay the hardware refresh at the endpoints, we replace the desktops with thin clients, or we offer to make it as a zero client or lockdown desktop so that uh, this e desktop can be used for longer duration. And uh, no additional hardware changes required using the lockdown board. In terms of software, we have seen somewhere around 20, 25% savings, which have been look, uh, seen at the customer places because of the better use of licenses, using the pool of licenses, using concurrent uh, user licenses in our solution, etc. In terms of services, we have seen 40 to 45 percent reduction or so the optimization into the cost because see, the services cost is plays one of the key important roles and that's where uh, we come into play because of the automation we have brought in, because of the centralization we have given, because of the context awareness we have brought, and the approach towards persona-driven workspace we have taken, we could actually save 30 to 40 to 45 percent in terms of services. So overall, in a nutshell, if I talk about the power savings, cooling cost in terms of data center, as well as the endpoint devices, and uh, considering hardware, software, and services, we can actually see anywhere between 20 to 40 percent saving based on the customer's already existing investments. So typically we deal with the scenario like say there is a customer who has already invested into hardware as well as virtualization solution like say Citrix or VMware Workspace. Uh, we can actually go to the customer and say we will take care of your hardware, your software licenses as well as the services which are required so we can come and become that flexible partner for you. So one of the case studies which I was wanted to talk about, so typically they started with uh, 22,000 VDI uh, for us. They already had 15,000 users which they would wanted to migrate to 22,000. Uh, typically what we do is we went ahead again, had the assessment done, defined the personas, come with the better sizing models and we adopted the OPEX model which was like say, we started charging them per desktop, per month, per user price, and this per user price was concurrent user. So when I mention about concurrent user, it could be the three users working in three different ships. License should be one. That's it. So I take a quick pause here to understand if you guys have any questions, anything which you would like to ask. I was so clear. <laughs> and with that, I'll just say that uh, the next steps for anybody who is interested into the solution uh, can get in touch with Hannah and me uh, in this GD zone. We are pretty much available today and tomorrow, and uh, maybe later on uh, you can get in touch with Hannah. Would like to add anything? Also, if you would like to see the demonstration of this solution, which I was discussing about, I'm pretty much available. We can schedule a demo for you, and uh, I'll walk you through the demo as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you to Prasad and also to Hannah, who I didn't introduce at the start, so thank you very much. Uh, we've got Afsar, right?